Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Tell you a little bit about our new friend. First of all, uh, it's very funny how Brendan was brought to my attention uh, on YouTube. Every time I was watching one of my videos, like reviewing it, uh, a suggested video would keep popping up, and it was this this young man, Brendan Cullerton. I'm like, who is this guy? And uh, I, I I started uh, going around and browsing his videos. I really like what I saw, and a couple weeks later, I got a message from him on our Facebook page, and uh, we got to talking, and I was like, you've got to come on the show. So let me tell you a little bit about Brendan. For those of you that don't know who he is, I'm sure most of you, if you're on YouTube, you should know who he is by now. Uh, he is known as a Skull Babylon. He's a neo-gonzo journalist. He is dedicated to, con he's a dedicated conscious media creator from Canada and director of ParadigmShiftCentral.com. Uh, it's a real-world interactive game to help shift consciousness and a portal for a global network of shifters and paradigm shift communities. He is also an award-winning filmmaker and creator of the Journey to Lucidity conscious movie saga that is available for free online. And I could go on and on and on. Welcome to the show, Brendan. It's great to have you here today. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. Thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, it's really exciting to be able to connect this way. Yes, it is. It is. So, um, so Brendan, uh, I, I like I said, I, I see that you're you're getting very popular on YouTube. You're very popular on Facebook, and um, it's really nice to see young people being able to share this message and being and being listened to. Uh, is a, the other great part. Uh, as far as this particular journey and and being and doing the work that you're doing today, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to this work and how, how you got here. For sure, for sure. And I mean, that's the thing, right? Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a journey. And uh, yeah, you know, mine, it, it's it's le it's led up to the point where we are now. And as you said, that's uh, related to the Paradigm Shift Central project, which is a real world game to help shift consciousness. And this project in itself uh, began in some ways, like way back when I was really young, but officially got started back in around 2009. And a big part of the, the focus of the project is around the creation of physical paradigm paradigm shift communities, which are about having open-minded discussion and meditation circles. And there's a bunch of these all across the world right now. So this began back in uh, when I was still a student in college and I was actually studying filmmaking and media production. And I wanted to be able to create a, a, a group that I could use to bring people together to be able to talk about some of the metaphysical topics that I was really interested in, yet never really got a chance to talk about. So growing up, I was always, you know, naturally just sort of being curious and asking questions and started dabbling into like yoga and meditation and spirituality and lucid dreaming and always always fascinated by Sasquatch and UFOs and all of these shifty things right so then my my objective was like okay I want to be able to find more people who I can talk to about this and then as I started going through my own awakening process and I started understanding what synchronicity was and I realized the basic idea that if you build it they will come so I started the very first paradigm shift group as a single club in my college and then I continued to document it and it's really just continued to evolve since then and as you you mentioned you know we we've created i've created movies i have lots of videos on my youtube and like yourself we've also been using the uh, online radio broadcast medium and, and doing live broadcasts through there and sharing our story and so now it's invited people all across the world to be able to to get involved with this and and to be a part of this evolving social media platform that the website is now so yeah it's really exciting 
That sounds very exciting. Tell me a, a little bit about your awakening process. What were what were some of the symptoms that perhaps you went through? What were some of the things that perhaps maybe you overcame? Uh, I know many people when when we go through this process, we have this um, almost like an anger towards society, like oh my god, I can't believe I've been lied to for so long, and and trying to get a grip on that as well as you know nurturing our spirit. How how was it for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I mean, you know, uh, right right now, like my my birthday is actually in a week, and I'm actually going to be turning 29 uh, next week on July 18th. And uh, the journey began, you know, back when uh, I remember being in grade nine and started getting interested in this stuff. So I was only about like 15 years old. And I mean, I think my story is actually pretty similar to a lot of other people's stories in the sense that my journey of investigation actually began shortly after 9-11. And what's interesting about this is that, you know, the the events of 9-11, as tragic as they were, they were this like mass, like global awakening. And, and it's really interesting because yeah. if you actually look at the, uh, the, this is like sort of a side note, but the design of the Twin Towers, at the base of the towers, there's actually a design that is like very reminiscent of a tuning fork. So like when those were struck, it was like this massive tuning fork got struck. And, you know, and this is, a, and this is you know, getting into this idea that quote unquote everything happens for a reason and this is consciousness doing what it can to help wake itself up so I mean through there you know it led me to just be like through my own investigation of, of stumbling across things related to 9-11 conspiracies and eventually it just sort of like got from one thing to another and started going deeper and deeper and deeper and for myself it, it was really exciting when I started to realize that there were these alternative sources of information and to realize that the spiritual path isn't just something that can be talked about but it's something that can be experienced and that's when I really started getting into things uh, like lucid dreaming because you know I, I wanted to be able to pursue the path of like it gnosis knowledge through experience and and lucid dreaming is a wonderful way to be able to do that um yeah and then like going forward you know like i i saw a ufo uh straight up when i was like back in college and everything like that and so like that really opened up my mind even though i already believed in ufos and ultimately like as much as I can say, as much as I can recognize that this world is a chaotic place, um, what I feel is very important is like the embodiment of like being that pillar of light, being that modern day Jedi, the light guardian. And like it, it's it's kind of that idea of instead of like bashing what you hate, promote what you love. So, mm-hmm. I mean, Canada, maybe, you know, like people will talk about like how there's different vibrations and stuff up here. But for me, like I, I've never really spent too much time complaining about the state of society. And rather, I was just like, let's start putting new new codes into the matrix you know let's hack the matrix let's put more love into this understanding even the idea that like love and cymatics and vibrations are, these are all real concepts and you understand the power of love is a real thing and emotions emit frequencies that can change reality and so getting into the idea of like this holographic matrix was a big part of my, my awakening and understanding that like as you think social you become so I really just brought that into a place of responsibility and wanted to be able to invite others to be a part of this and to say like hey you know like Let's let's do that. Let's promote what we love. Let's be the love that we want to see in the world. And just that's when you get into the things like doing free hugs and and shiftivism. And you know that's something that we can talk about as we go on. But yeah. but yeah, that's 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 part of it. So oh yeah, uh, I love it. And uh, you're you're in Canada also, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm in uh, London, Ontario, Canada. London, Ontario. I thought I was going to say Alberta. I don't know if that's the same thing, but uh, is that close to you, uh, Trevor? Is that close to Winnipeg or, or, or it's not, not necessarily. <laughs> yes, no. it's it's the, the the next province over. Well, yeah, close enough. <laughs> okay, closer than where I am, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Brendan, tell us what does you use the word shifter? What does it mean to be a shifter? Right, right. So, I mean, the term shifter obviously relates to what the project is. And again, you know, ParadigmShiftCentral.com, it's the platform. It's a social media uh, platform, kind of like Facebook in its own way. And through this, we, we're inviting people to be imp- to be a part of this game. And the way how you play the game is by being a shifter. And what a shifter is, is someone who is intentionally helping shift consciousness. So it's kind of a word that we created. And, and that's like a really fun thing in itself, you know, like it, it, don't just limit yourself to like what other words 
words people use, like create your own words, create your own language, create your own code. And so like being a shifter is, is many things. Being a shifter is working on your own path. Being a shifter is like going out of your way to help other people. It's someone who, again, who is helping shift the paradigms. So, I mean, that's like the really basic idea of what a shifter is. And then uh, I mentioned this earlier, uh, we also have the correlating term that we use known as shiftivism. So shiftivism is like our form of activism, but more specific. And shiftivism is intentional acts of love to help shift consciousness, to be able to help plant seeds. So a shifter is like someone who, you know, like might be able to be a mirror for someone else on their path by like sparking a conversation with them or, or helping like point them in a direction of more information. And as I said, you know, a shifter is someone who who goes out there and does free hugs. And again, this is where we get into the idea of like hacking the matrix with love. You, like you become that new code. So it, it, that's the short answer of what a shifter is. Very cool. And 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 as far as the free hugs um, aspect of it, how? How has that experience been for you? Have you have you been able to give hugs? Do people walk away from you? What's that like for you when you're doing it? Absolutely. It's been both. And, you know, that's kind of the whole point. And uh, I, I can share with you, like, the most recent example that we did doing free hugs, um, which was just the last weekend. Um, but doing free hugs was something that I began – I began doing back in about 2010, 2011 when I was in in college and everything. And um, part of the part of the inspiration behind doing free hugs is is I, I I began, again, you know, I sort of have this mentality when I approach things of a very like technologically oriented, holographic oriented, even the idea of like thinking of things from the perspective of a hacker. Um, you know, a hacker is someone who will like create new ways to get around things or create like new avenues or understand the system in such a way that they can ease their way into it. And so one of the ways um, that inspired me to do free hugs was uh, my own introduction, my own creation of the concept of hugs 2.0. So free hugs are a great thing in themselves. They're super powerful. And the reason for doing them is to be able to like bring new compassion into culture. And you're right. Even people who walk by, that's still important because even if they see it, it's still going to plant that thought seed. Even if they don't come up and hug you, they're still going to see it. And they're going to be like, whoa, you know, like someone's doing that. Like, that's really different. That's really weird. And then maybe they'll see you again. And then next time they might hug you. But in terms of the the hugs 2.0, um, what's actually what that idea relates to is that when you're doing a regular hug, you'll hug someone and then you'll walk away and you may never see them again. There is that possibility. It's quite likely that you could run into them again, but you never know. What I actually started doing is that when I was back in college, a friend of mine uh, had a button making machine. So like, you know, buttons, two and a quarter inch buttons that you wear on your backpack and your shirt. And I was like, oh my God, like this is, this is perfect. Like I, I know what I want to do. I've got a website what I'm going to do is I'm going to design buttons with images on them related to like sacred geometry and esoteric symbols and the flower of life and the eye of raw and all cool things. And I'm going to put my website on the button and then I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do free hugs with people. And then when the people come up and give me a hug, I'm going to give them a button and then I'll like give it to them as a gift. And then it creates like this lasting impression and it invites them to connect to this project and to be involved with the game. And then obviously like that button can be used again and they can give it to someone else and it kind of ripples out even further. So since we've started making buttons, I've literally like manually made like thousands of buttons. And so when I go out and do free hugs, in addition to just doing regular hugs, I really try to uh, give out as many of these buttons as possible. And these are buttons that the shift buttons are available through the website and for other people in the community. And, and we're giving them out to people in the community as much as we can as the project evolves. And so it's really cool. And what I was saying is that within the, the most recent example that we had, um, there was a festival here in London, Ontario, Canada, a really big festival called Sunfest. And we went out there and, and, and we did free hugs, me and a group of friends. And one of the things that was really cool is that we um, there, there were some volunteers at the festival. It was a young girl and a young boy. And they were probably about like 17 years old. And then they came up and they gave us a hug. And it really meant something to them. Like you could tell, like in the moment, they were just like, this is so cool, you know, like it, 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 it resonated with them. It left an impression. And then later on in the evening, like after we had finished doing free hugs, I was kind of walking around the festival with some friends. And then I ran into that same guy and girl later. And they were actually doing free hugs with their own free hugs hug signs that they had made out of pieces nice. of cardboard and so like right there I was just like that is what it's about you know like yes. it's about that literal ripple effect in action the idea that like I can do free hugs knowing that the ripple effect will go beyond what I can immediately see and that's why we invite other people to do it because you never know 
know how far that one hug can go and how much it can actually mean to someone. And having that like that physical heart to heart love connection, like a lot of people might not get that very often. And it, again, you know, it's just a really important thing and it's becoming more and more common. And the last thing I'll just say right here is that what was actually really funny is that since I've been doing free hugs in my cities over the years, a lot of people have like begun to recognize me and they've begun to know me. Um, one time I was crossing the street and somebody drove by in a car and they yelled out the window. They were like, hugs hero. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and, it, and I was like, oh my God, like that was so cool. And so, I mean, um, just a quick idea I wanted to put out there is that, you know, when we were talking about shifters, we're also talking about like, like Jedi and we're also talking about superheroes and it's about encouraging people to, to step into the real superpower of their heart and really becoming that modern day superhero that doesn't have to wear a mask, but uses their superpowers of love to be able to help change the world. And the, the thing I just want to mention is that when we were doing the free hugs, last weekend on Saturday, we, as it turned out, we weren't the only free hugs group there. There were actually three separate free hugs groups who nice. decided to show up there on their own. Whereas in the previous years, I was the only one. And now like there was like all of these people coming and doing free hugs. It, it goes to show to me that the paradigms are indeed shifting oh, yeah. and that this is something that is coming up through the collective within the collective consciousness. So it's, it's really inspiring. And again, you know, we invite people to do it where they are. Absolutely. I think it's great. And, 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 you know, it does take a, a bit of courage to to express ourselves from the heart and i think by by doing that we're giving people not only the example but also the the support that they can do it also uh one of the things that i like to do uh you, you know you're doing free hugs what i like to do is i like to bring i'm trying to bring the words i love you into our regular mm -hmm. vernacular people are so afraid of saying i love you and 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 it doesn't matter whether you're in love with somebody it doesn't matter if you even know them but to love humanity and to let people know that they're loved and it's so funny the uh, the the um responses i get or the reactions when i tell a friend i love you and they're like oh yeah yeah love you back you know they don't know how to do it you know <laughs> so it's kind of like we've we're, we've forgotten and we're and again with hugs uh with saying the words i love you this is something that is a part of us and within us and and by bringing it out, we are, like you said, hacking the matrix with love. I, I love the terms that you're bringing. Well, the resurgence of Jedi and light guardians. What, what, how do you utilize those words and, and bring that into your your vernacular with your uh, shift cent or your shift project? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, you know, like the, the concept of the Jedi is something that I'm really passionate about, as well as a lot of other people throughout culture, thanks to things like Star Wars. But what's interesting is that it doesn't actually originate with Star Wars. And, and some people may know this. And, and the idea is, is that like back in ancient Egypt, there actually was a group known as the D-Jedi. And they were actually like, you know, sort of like an esoteric, like holders of esoteric knowledge who would be able to like help, help with the shift in the world that was happening at that time. And the word Jedi literally refers to pillars of light. So in that sense, you know, when we're talking about light guardians, like we're, we're talking, we're inviting people to to be that through their own choice. Like no one can make you be a Jedi. No one can make you be a light guardian. But you have the opportunity to step into that whenever you choose to. And it's something that can like take practice and it's something that can like evolve over time. It's the awakening of the guardian within all of us. And you know, the guardian refers to like someone who is a holder of ideas and a holder of visions. So I mean, a light, a, a guardian is like a guardian of the future, a guardian of like sustainable living, of love, of compassion, of consciousness. And so like that's something that actually comes up in the Journey to Lucidity movies is that the Journey to Lucidity movies, they're, they're a, a journey through a transformational festival that's sort of like a quasi documentary that takes place in a dream, really similar to the movie Waking Life as a reference for people who are familiar with that. And a big part of the movie is about the resurgence of the Guardian. And and so again, you know, like it's cool to, and which I'll just say this is is about the, the awakening of the solar hero. So that is within inside all of us and, and that's something that we're seeing within culture and I want to be able to like make that very prominent so it's not just like this airy fairy term but it's actually something that can be lived and that can be embodied and it looks cool and that is what makes it exciting and accessible for other people to be like hey you know like I like this I want to be involved with this and it's happening uh yes it is and I'm so, and I'm and I thank you for supporting it and, and helping this to come forward uh we're about to uh, have a commercial break um so I guess the best place for people to get in contact with you or to be a participant would be at ParadigmShiftCentral.com? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you guys have a Facebook page. You got What's your uh, main YouTube uh, channel? Yeah, my main YouTube is YouTube.com slash SkullBabylon.
now, back to your host, Bernard Alvarez. And welcome back to the Just Bernard Show here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We are speaking with Brendan Culleton about the Paradigm Shift Central project and the work that he's been doing for the last couple of years. Uh, before the show, Brendan, I had mentioned uh, the idea of using consciousness as, uh, as medicine or using conscious media as medicine. Can you talk a little bit about that, what you mean by that? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a really, really important topic because I think it's something that we're beginning to see more and more of. And it's something that uh, obviously is a really big part of my work. You know, like when when I when I talk about conscious media being medicine, I, I, I'm almost directly relinking it back to the uh, the role of the shaman within ancient cultures and the resurgence of the shaman and the magic of like storytelling and the magic of art to be able to convey ideas, information, and ultimately inspiration to inspire people. Again, you know, spire going back to the light within themselves, the light guardian, the light pillars. And so, I mean, with the work that I do, um, some of the things that that I, I really value is when people comment on my work and they say, you know, like, hey, you're watching your video made me cry and and it allowed me to connect with a deeper part of myself. And that is like such a real thing. And it's such a powerful thing. And it goes back to this idea of the magic of storytelling and so I mean the journey to lucidity movies that that we've talked about briefly uh, those are something that you know I invite people to watch at watch and experience for themselves and to almost do it as a meditation and allow themselves to be in a place where they can open up their own heart and you know it's very likely that given the right circumstance they'll be able to invite themselves to cry as well and some of the things that we also do uh, within the paradigm shift central project there's a lot to it and obviously we won't be able to cover all of it within this one hour broadcast but we also do global full moon meditations and in particular what we've been doing recently are these global journey meditations so it's something where as the facilitator what I'm doing is I'm actually walking people through almost like a first person narrative it's kind of like a shared waking dream for the audience and through this story i allow them to connect with deeper parts of themselves through the storytelling and through the, the connection of characters and through the through the magic of, of audio and music and setting and so just by like creating this space within their mind through their they're just like what they're like you know bringing in through their senses by listening and watching it allows them to like activate parts of themselves within that that might have been laid or might have been closed off and so again with the global meditations we've done numerous meditations we've done we have allowed people we haven't we've had people like blatantly like cry during the meditations and another really cool thing which I think a lot of people will notice is um it, it, what I refer to as activation sensations and that's when you get that tingling sensation up the spine and I feel that's actually a really important thing because it has to do with like energy movements and when that's happening like that's like showing that like there is like this activation this energy correlation happening within your body and so like it creating media that can actually Actually do that that can create something so inspiring so engaging that it's like physically changing people you know that's when it gets into this idea of medicine and, and again you know medicine just in terms of inspiring them and, and giving them another perspective and, and even hope hope is such an important thing and, and it's something that I intentionally carry uh, with the work that I do and that's you know why why I constantly do free hug videos and why I constantly just like put out what I put out is to like give people hope and to invite them to be the hope themselves for, for others to see so that ripple effect can continue Absolutely, and and I hope I hope more and more people are inspired by this work, and actually the uh, the paradigm shift central game. And can you tell us a bit about the game? When you say game, what do you mm -hmm. mean? And actually, somebody is asking, what are the rules of the game? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So in terms of calling it a, a real world game, to, a real world interactive game to help shift consciousness, this this stems from, again, you know, growing up myself, I, I played a lot of video games. And that was like a lot of what I did with my time for for quite for, for uh, you know, growing up and everything. And then uh, within the past couple of years, we've shifted the project into this idea of gamification. A lot of people are excited about games and especially youth these days. And and we want to be able to bring that excitement into real world action. 
And so the ways how we sort of formulate how you play this game, you play this game by uh, creating conscious media as one thing and then sharing that through the main website as a platform to be able to help promote what people are creating within the community and give them a place to share their voice. And also the ways how you engage with the real world game is, you know, very simply to help shift consciousness. And this is what we were talking about earlier through things like free hugs, through things like creating conversations with people and like the scores of the game can be sort of arbitrary at some point but they're very real in the same way when you intentionally go out there to be able to help make a difference in someone's life and you notice the difference that you do make you know that person might come back to you in a month and be like hey you know like because of what you said or because of what you did like it, it really helped me on my own journey and thank you and that's how you play the game sort of by paying it forward and just uh, you know like living by example and being a leader within your community. So another part of the game is the creation of the physical paradigm shift communities. So, I mean, within this project, uh, again, you know, the, the way how we play the game as a community within the online aspects of the project, you can think of the website as like the, it is the video game. It is the engine and people play it by engaging with some of the live broadcasts that we do by adding their voice, by practicing creating. And the website right now is really, really cool and actually actually really, really unique and it's continuing to evolve because as I mentioned, people have the chance to create their own conscious media and to be able to share it with a global audience through the platform. We refer to them as quest journals and we also have conscious articles. So it's a place where they can practice creating and going back to the idea of conscious media as medicine, you know, I, I experienced this through my own path, like the idea of like how much creating something has allowed me to grow and really just approaching it from the idea of practice. Like you don't have to be perfect but it's important to be able to take those first steps and this game is a place to invite people to take those first steps because maybe they might be at that point where they're just like you know I've never made a video before and I'm kind of shy about doing it but suddenly they have this place where they're invited to do it and it encourages them and inspires them and they see other people creating and so that's how you play the game is by like creating your media by supporting other people in the community by getting involved with the live broadcast by doing things like free hugs where you are by creating shift communities and by consciously like working on your own path so that would be part of the way as to how you play this real world game i love it i i wish there was a way for you to like create an app out of it and kind of like uh do like the pokemon go thing that person you know <laughs> yeah that um, is the, i'll just say there is the idea of that and one of the ideas like the website the app idea is kind of the website in itself um but one of the really cool things i'll just mention this real quick on the website is that we actually have a team map and the team map actually shows you where other shifters are located across the world so kind of similar to pokemon uh in that sense you can actually see where other shifters and other shift communities are near you and then you're invited to like reach out and contact them and and this is a great tool if you're traveling you know you can pull up the map you can say like oh okay there's like 10 shifters in this city let's contact them ahead of time and organize a free hugs event so it's it, it is happening it's I really exciting that. i absolutely love that now uh, we're talking a, a bit about you know hacking the matrix with love and 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 you know doing these things like uh, giving free hugs or saying i love you to somebody uh but for some people that let's say they haven't awakened yet or they're listening to the show they have no idea what we're talking about when we're talking about the matrix, what do you consider the matrix? How, how do we define what the matrix is? Yeah, this is this is a really exciting question, and, and it's one that you know I, I really enjoy getting into because I'm a I'm a big fan of getting into like the metaphysical aspects and and the hyperdelic aspects of reality. And hyperdelic is actually a, I, I think I invented that word, but to me it it, it makes sense. <laughs> and, and and when I'm referring to to hyperdelic, it basically refers to the idea that this reality is not as cut and dry as it appears to. Be. We are more than our physical body. And, and, and when you start to see beyond the illusions of separation, you begin to understand that this reality is actually a matrix of light. And matrix can just be thought of as, as a way of thinking of system, interconnected system. It's a holographic matrix of light where our thoughts are actually responding to everything around us and everything around us is responding to our thoughts and vice versa. And to me, one of the ways as to how to really make sense of this, because a lot of people are just like, this doesn't, you know, like, I don't get it. You know, one of the ways as to how you can make sense of this is 
when you start to understand more about your multidimensional nature, it starts to connect the dots. And the way how to understand more about your multidimensional reality uh, nature is to begin looking into topics like lucid dreaming and astral projection and, and just dream exploration in general. And you can see that through through that topic that every night, you know, we leave, you know, we leave our conscious body, like our consciousness leaves our physical body. It's exploring these other dimensions. And within these other dimensions, we can actively experience the idea that our thoughts are creating. And that's when you get into lucid dreaming. When, you know, if you like think of something, it appears. If you tell if you think about teleporting, you can teleport. If you think about flying, you can fly. And and so the dream space is a place where we can actively practice creating with our mind. And this is the big kicker that I always reiterate. And it's a big paradigm shift for me. But it's basically this idea that the dream space is not like secondary to the physical plane. The physical plane actually, from my understanding, at least, you know, think for yourself. The physical plane is actually like uh, it comes second to the dream space. And what I mean by this is that like the dream space that we go to every night is closer to where we are actually from before we are born before we are incarnated into this reality and it's the same place that we go to when we die and this is why you get into the ideas of like people dreaming about loved ones and being able to communicate with like spirit guides and higher intentional high intelligent entities within their dreams and so when you understand that your thoughts create within the dream space you understand that your thoughts create within this reality because this reality is another version of the dream just with a different vibrational frequency that creates this illusion of physicality and separation but once you know that intuitively through your own self and this is again you know it's something inside all of us and and you don't have to learn it from me and it's something that you can experience through yourself then you begin to understand that like yes this this reality like is it is a holographic matrix and it is something where thoughts are, are are the way how we program it and so i mean like that's why we talk about the free hugs and and, and the hacking the matrix and everything like that because like we're we're it, everything is noticed nothing goes unnoticed everything is recorded and every action big or small creates that ripple effect so it's asking you the question of what ripple effects do you want to make you know, it's very interesting that you that you that you shared it like that, it, it, because um, for me myself, and first of all, I know that um, uh, in se- certain indigenous communities, the idea of the dream world as the real world uh, is a, is a regular belief. As a mm-hmm. matter of fact, when I um, uh, during one of my vision quests, I, you know, you, you you take the medicine and you go into the psychedelic journey. And one of the first things that my guides during this journey said to me, they said, no, this is the real world. What you're Mm -hmm. looking at is the fake world. Now you can see the real world. And so what I've been able to do over the years is I kind of gauge my my spiritual path, where I'm at on my path, by the theme of my dreams. I've come to understand that perhaps when we do transcend this physical body, that dream world is where we're going. So I want to cultivate a good dream place or I want to do the work needed in that dream time. Like, you know, let's say, uh, actually I'll share something personal. A couple months ago, I was having a lot of dreams about my youth and family and and a lot of, you know, I'll call them nightmares for lack of a better term. And it was like, wow, waking up, it was like, well, apparently I need to work on some of this. This is coming to the surface and this is something that I need to work through. So it's a great way uh, for us to be able to gauge our, our daily waking consciousness in reflection to how our dream state is. What what do you feel? Yeah, totally, totally. And, and, you know, again, like the dream topic is a huge recurring topic within the Paradigm Shift Central game. And, and I will just say this, you know, for people who are interested, absolutely, you're invited to be involved with this project. And one of the really exciting things about it is that every t- two weeks within the multiple broadcasts that we do, uh, we also have a regular dream class. So this is where, you know, through Google Hangouts, we come together and we practice talking about dreams. We practice sharing our dreams. And ultimately, this is creating a space where it's in encouraging people to get more involved with their dreams and to study them and to pay attention. And one of the things that's really exciting about dreams, and again, like all the recordings for those are online through the website and people can download those and listen to them afterwards. But one of the things that's really exciting about your dreams is that when you start putting the intention towards your dreams, the universe responds. So if you're just like kind of like sitting back and just waiting for them to come to you, it it may take a while. It, It may never come to you. But when you actively put that intention to the universe and start studying dreaming and start learning about it and start practicing 
practicing some of the things, you know, start writing down your dreams in a dream journal, start meditating, start doing reality checks. The universe will see this because you are the universe. And it'll say like, you know, like, oh, okay, like they're ready. Like, let's start like sending them something, you know, and they'll begin to develop uh, a more intimate connection with your dreams. And, and, and yeah, you know, like I'm, I'm happy that you brought up like the, the, you briefly mentioned like the idea of like the psychedelic space. And again, you know, like the, the psychedelic realms that, that we can experience through things like working with these sacred medicines like mushrooms and DMT and ayahuasca um, and, and going back like way back, you know, like within my origins of like how this got started, like, you know, I did DMT before uh, back in like 2009. And that was a huge inspiration for me because through my own visceral experience, like I saw firsthand what you can refer to as the spiritual realms, even though this is all spiritual. But I saw like the code of the matrix, the infinite light unfolding upon itself. And I knew it was there. So at that point, it was just like, OK, like I don't have to like half like guess as to like what I'm talking about. I know it's there and I know it's within everyone and everyone can eventually realize this within their own path, even if it's just at the very end through death at the very least. But um, within this idea of like studying the psychedelic space and experiencing that within a recent experience that I had working with five grams of sacred mushrooms. And I actually have a YouTube video of this on my channel. Uh, um, it's hidden, but it's also on my Patreon uh, is, is I, in that moment, it was blatantly obvious for me that like the dream world and this world, world where we're like so much one in the same and we literally are the dream awakening to itself and and this is like this this divine cosmic process of moving through this this awakening you know it's, it's coming into a place of remembering and we have to go through that amnesia but you know i say this time and time again and it's such a key way of saying it but like this project this story our story your story this is about becoming better dreamers within the dream this is about the dream awakening to itself and through that that comes self-empowerment and it becomes an experience expanded understanding of reality that becomes incredibly exciting and suddenly some of the trivial things don't become like it become less important and you begin to realize like what it is really all about and you begin to flow through reality with a little bit of a different perspective with a paradigm shift and you begin to like appreciate things differently you begin to interact with things differently and, and the universe sees that and it begins to like reward like feeding all these new opportunities into you and synchronicities begin to appear and and so like yeah like just that idea of the dream space and this space like becoming one in the same and awakening to that and awakening again to our potential is such a key point because you know i'll just say this is that within this project the the thing that's a big focus of it is that there's always going to be people who are beginning their awakening process who are who are just stepping into a lot of these ideas you know like there's always going to be that like 15 year old kid who's just starting starting to get into this and we want to be able to create a safe space for them to be able to know that they have others to talk to and that they are supported and that they can learn about this and if they've had a psychedelic experience they can talk about it and that's something that we invite within the community you know just like that experience and any experience so yeah being able to support each other as dreamers awakening within the dream is that's that's the story that that's that right. is it right there that's beautiful that's beautiful and um, I know that you made a reference to the hero's journey in reference to mm -hmm. your movies. Um, were you, are you making the, the reference to what Joseph Campbell says in the books that he talks about or, or is this just a, a universal concept that you're talking about? Definitely both because, oh. you know, I, I think, yeah, like I think Joseph Campbell in himself directly or unintentionally was referring to like this sort of universal story that that he explained in his own way. But but it is, you know, like like what does it mean to be a hero? Like a hero is like someone I mean, that that's a big question. Maybe I don't have a direct answer for that. But I mean, you know, like what I what I can better say is that I think this is about us stepping into our own divinity, our cosmic divinity. And it's about like the prince and the princesses awakening within all of us and then choosing to step into that role you know going back to the guardian like it's something that you have to willingly choose to step yeah. into um but but again you know like it's it's definitely you know this physical reality is not the be all end all there is a much bigger story that is happening here and people are beginning to wake up to that and and this reality is it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be able to experience all the highs and the lows. And, and you know, like I just remind people as we get close to the end of the show that if you're here on Earth, like you, you know, depending on how you think about this. But for me, it makes sense, like the idea of, of choosing to be here, choosing to incarnate here and actually realizing that it is like a gift in a way. It is a privilege. There's like a lot of other like multidimensional beings out there that in some ways are envious of our physical reality. And it's within the physical reality that you can experience 
experience, you know, such unique things such as like being able to like do free hugs, you know, and just being able to like love people and learn and go through the process of like forgetting and remembering. So, I mean, like the fear, this is a really important thing I'll say too, you know, like the fear that we see within this world, the chaos that we see within this world. I just want to remind people, and this is something that you can, we talked about recently within a topic related to sacred geometry is that fear and chaos is, is, is still love. It's just love in a disharmonious form. It's love to the point where we, we forget that it's love, but ultimately it still is love. And what I mean by love is like love is all and love is like this harmonious frequency that the universe is it is like the underlying current it is the ocean in itself and so like sometimes like the, it will it will appear as a perfect mandala and symmetrical and sometimes it will appear chaotic and disharmonious but evidently it's still made up of the same things and ultimately what is always going to happen is that it's going to go through this ebb and this flow of chaos and love over and over again so it'll go it'll go through chaos and it'll come into love you know we go through what we experience as turmoil and hate so that we can learn more about what what we want and what what it actually is that's important to us. So I mean, with all the things happening in this world, like I just want to remind people that you know, with, with like all the hashtags going around, uh, one that I encourage to promote out is this idea of only love matters, and and really bringing it back to like that deep metaphysical esoteric understanding of what that actually means, and ultimately bring it back into this process of trust. Um, when we can trust the universe, it, it it really allows us to move through this matrix uh, in a different way. Yeah, and, and that is a big part of it, trusting and knowing. And, yeah. and I believe we all have that knowing within us deep down, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. So totally. it's definitely a part of it, just peeling away those layers and getting to that. Well, I, I, I've borrowed the term one love from Bob Marley, and I've, I've, <laughs> I've used that as my, as my hashtag, actually. And it is that. It's all is one love, like you said. What mm -hmm. is, um, we've got a couple seconds left. What's next for uh, Paradigm Shift Central? Yeah, there's there's a lot that is happening with this project right now. And again, you know, people are listening to this like totally go check it out and browse the website, see some of the quest journals that people are creating, check out the conscious articles and especially tune in for the live broadcast because those are interactive things that anybody can be involved with. And you can create a profile through the website. And ultimately, you know, it's about incur it's 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 this idea that as the water rises, so does every ship. And so, you know, like I've got a decent audience through like my YouTube and everything like that. It's still evolving. But ultimately, this is about reaching our hand back to the people climbing up the mountain and then like continuing that pattern so that we're all helping each other up the mountain and that's what this project is doing you know it's helping people who, who who feel like they don't have a platform to give them a platform and to know that their story is important and their story matters and to be able to like allow them to create their own mythos to live their own story and I just want to give a huge shout out to all the people who I'm directly already involved with through the project you know we've got a lot of amazing people within our team and, you know, I just want to say that, like, without them, this wouldn't be possible and just inviting more people to be a part of this team. And it really is a team. So there's that happening. And just as another thing, I'm also working on Journey to Lucidity 3. And that's going to be coming out in the future as part of the ongoing saga. So lots Great. of stuff still going on. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Brendan. Uh, everybody, I just want to remind you that next week we will have Aphrodite North will be here. She's a master in astrologer and she's going to be doing a reading on the state of the world right now anyway very interesting